On December 10, 1997, a young woman named Julia Hill climbed a 60-meter tree in a California forest and stayed there to live. This environmental activist thought that one week of such a protest would be enough for the timber processing company to abandon plans to cut down a thousand-year-old sequoia. But it took much more time than one could imagine. With the help of like-minded people, Julia arranged a dwelling in the branches of trees, which consisted of two square platforms, approximately two by two meters. The necessary supplies were lifted up to the platform in the tree. She rested in a sleeping bag and cooked food on a gas burner stove. While the unique tree was named the moon, Julia was given the name Butterfly because she lived on it. She was very busy charging her cell phones from solar panels and taking dozens of radio interviews to draw attention to the problem of deforestation. The activist even became a regular wood correspondent for American television shows. On the tree, Julia withstood strong winds, winter frosts, and even a 10-day siege of the guards of the local timber processing company, which did not allow supplying her with food. In total, Butterfly spent 738 days on the moon and climbed down only on December 18, 1999, when environmentalists and tree loggers agreed. As a result, the sequoia and the area around it were preserved and the collected charitable funds were given to the local university to study the problems of reforestation. Julia Hill's living conditions on a tree can hardly be called comfortable, but if she had the opportunity to address to specialists in this field, she would definitely not have frozen from the below zero degree temperatures. I design and build tree houses. My company is the first one that began operating in Ukraine and is the only one which specializes exclusively in the narrow sphere of the construction of tree houses. Svetlana Dzuba is indeed the first person in the country who began to develop this type of housing that differs significantly from standard amusement parks. The Western fashion for full-fledged houses that are built on trees has only just recently captivated the interest of Ukrainians. These are no longer children's hovels with some kind of slides or some very simple buildings. These are architectural constructions that have all the modern amenities and conveniences – a bathroom, a shower, a jacuzzi and a fireplace. In other words, installation of such luxuries of an ordinary house can be easily installed in a tree house. Is it possible to equip such housing without harm to the tree? What foreign exhibits inspired Svetlana to start her own business in this sphere? How does the process of creating a tree house differ from the construction of an ordinary house? UATV took an exclusive interview with the builder of such tree houses, who revealed a new form of ecological architecture to Ukrainians. The current fashion for tree houses appeared in the mid 1990s in some European countries and in the US. This culture is widely developed in European countries and in the US. There is even a new term tree house. One time we were in such a house. It was a hotel in Spain. We got such incredible feelings as if you were sitting in a real house. Here is a bed, here is a toilet, here is a sink. Here you can live, watch TV. You can have lunch, dinner, and then go to sleep. All these amenities are inside the house that, believe it or not, is built on a tree. You are surrounded by a forest, mountains, and a lake, and there is nobody else near you. This vacation impressed Svetlana so much that she began to look for similar offers somewhere closer to Kiev. Surely, in the wooded Carpathian Mountains, there should be hotels built on trees, don't you think? I think the domestic market is already buzzing. All people engaged in business have learned all the specific details of this sector and have started building such tree houses. I started to search and I understood that this market is totally open and it is completely free in Ukraine. I got to know that there was no understanding what a tree house is. There were no companies building such houses. Svetlana is a marketing specialist. Several years ago she worked in the construction industry. She was the director of a company that designed and built exhibition stands. That is, she had enough information to figure out how to build houses on trees. This idea appeared when I took my maternity leave. I became interested in the concept of building houses and thoroughly studied it. We started to implement the first projects. Initially, we tested a lot of fasteners on trees and built pilot houses. 
The most difficult thing was to explain to a consumer exactly how a treehouse is designed from an architectural point of view. Firstly, in Ukraine, houses with large square areas on which quite strong and tall trees grow are not very common. If such a landscape is typical for quaint suburbs in the U.S., Ukrainians typically go to villages in the countryside for agricultural purposes. As for those who dwell in the big cities and in the suburbs, they also had no clue about this option. When I tried to explain my idea, people didn't understand me. I could just tell some story about a unicorn and the reaction was the same. That is, until now a tree house is perceived by most people as some kind of a playground. But this is not a playground for children. They think that this is some kind of a rope park. In truth, a tree house is a real piece of property, like real estate. If this is a tree house for a child, then this is the child's first real estate. Svetlana explained to potential customers that in the West children are taught to be responsible and take care of household chores and that a house is a modern building with an echo design, which is durable and does not do damage to the surrounding trees in the yard. But still, she had to make some compromises so as not to lose orders from her first customers. Today I already see that the market is ready to accept this product in the form in which I saw it initially. Especially for UATV, Svetlana Zuba tells what factors and details should be taken into account when designing tree houses, how difficult it is to assemble a full-fledged dwelling at a certain height and in what picturesque places she managed to work, how it's made. Svetlana is perfect in drawing and marketing, but she did not study as an architect. However, as it turned out, such an education could only do harm in a new business. If you build a house on a tree in compliance with the state building standards and codes, then this house will not last for long. The problem is that the tree is a moving object, and even if you install supports in the ground, the vibrations of the trunk of the tree can often destroy houses. The general approach here should be the same, as in the construction of earthquake-resistant buildings. In countries where earthquakes are often a common natural disaster, there are not only restrictions on height, they try to make houses flexible, with elements that can be planned within specific limits and not ruin the whole structure. In the same way, a house cannot be tightly attached to the trunk of a tree, meaning there should be some measure of flexibility. These characteristics are calculated depending on the sort of the tree. First, you need to look for the perfect balance between the capabilities of the tree and the needs of the client. That is, if the client wants a very large house and they have a very small tree, then in any case, they must understand that there has to be some additional support on the ground. In other words, some clients ignore this fact and simply say, I have this tree, and you build the best possible house without any supporting beams. Some people do not really care how it is done. The tree, of course, should be healthy. According to Svetlana's experience, a tree trunk with a diameter of 35 centimeters is enough. It is necessary to take into account the screen area of the structure at a given height, so that the house doesn't sway too much from the wind. Each project is individual and adapted to a specific tree. Svetlana calculates what materials and accessories she needs and orders them in her workshop. Together with the guys, we study and choose blueprints. They ask questions, I show them, and they begin to draw blanks. Then they take a beam, file it in the right size, grind it and mill it. Then the painting process and the testing of the material come next. Then they take the material, package it, and deliver it for installation. As a rule, the supporting constructions of the house are made of pine or spruce, as they're both light and durable. The beams are soaked with natural linseed oil, which displays the texture of the trees and protects them from moisture and mold even before building. We even paint the linings, all the seams, all the ends are necessary and only after that all of the pieces are put together. We do not paint the whole product at once, we paint each of the details separately. To begin installation, you need to screw into the barrel special steel mounts which Svetlana orders from a locksmith. She says that the procedure is safe for the tree. We use bolts that we screw into trees according to a specially patented American technology. Such tree houses have been built for more than 60 years. Here we have been screwing bolts for six years, and not a single tree into which we screwed the bolt has died. One bolt screwed into a tree can withstand an amazing five tons. 
At this point, it is necessary to correctly fix the supporting structures of the house properly, so that it remains movable and subsequently will not crumble. Svetlana demonstrates the process on a completed project in the picturesque village of Kozin, near Kiev. For example, if the house is attached between two trees, let's imagine two bolts screwed into a tree and a beam is lying on these bolts. That is, the beam is fixed from below with special plates. And if you just fix it, then it will connect these two trees. Because the trees sway in different directions, depending on the wind, and they will either tear down the beam or break themselves. So one fastener is static and the other is movable. But in the end, it should turn out not just a box with windows, because a treehouse needs to have some basic content. Once Svetlana came up with the idea of building a spy house with a variety of traps and secret compartments. This summer a treehouse should become the abode of the forest sorceress from Slavic fairy tales. It was the theme of Baba Yaga's house, but when they proposed some details to add to the decoration, they decided to simplify it. They suggested that I do not need to add such overly stylized elements. They said I should just make a simple house, and the girl will fill it with some of her own new ideas. It is difficult to plan everything ahead in this business. Often you have to modify or change the project. Recently, Svetlana was asked to build a treehouse in Geneva. There was no possibility to travel there in order to make an appraisal and draw up a cost estimate of the work, so the masters were sent a photo of the location with the measurements through email. We drafted a sketch and a blueprint, built a house, brought it to the place, and then I saw a live tree. I was informed about the meters in diameter, but in fact there was one and a half meters. The sawn branches were below, and the branch stubs sawed off from these branches, protruded 20 to 30 centimeters in length. This is very significant. It turned out that all of the beams were laying on these tree stumps. All adjustments had to be made in the course of our work. It was perfect that the workers took spare materials with them. They also changed the shape of the observation deck at the top, so that the branches would not be an obstacle to the homes of local residents. If a house is plated for winter, Svetlana uses linen insulation in the walls and metal plastic windows. Sewerage is diverted through inconspicuous pipes along the trunk of the trees or through additional supports. There are no restrictions as to decoration and amenities. Svetlana's workshop has already built more than a dozen such tree houses in Ukraine and abroad, but so far without such expensive delights. One of the latest projects is completely free. We're doing a charity project for a center in which young, ailing children are undergoing chemotherapy. The reaction was unusual. How can this be on a tree? But how? You mean a tree house? Well, we're building and here are our projects. That's exactly what we're doing. And what can you give to our children? So we talked with the psychologist of this center in order to understand what children need more. They also interviewed our children. The children asked for a kitchen. They made a kitchen for them. They picked up those colors that are soothing, give them hope, and this is a very professional approach. I'm impressed by such beneficent work. The house is not finished yet, but the children have already settled there, and they are very happy. Now Svetlana Zuba is working on the most affordable, typical design of a treehouse, which with minimal adjustments would fit into almost any location. Also, she has dreams of opening her very own forest hotel in Ukraine. I want as many people as possible to visit and stay the night in such treehouse. I cannot describe this feeling. People must simply try this out and get this feeling of freedom and fresh air of this natural environment. You need to climb into a treehouse so that you can feel that you have come off the ground. I really want everyone to fully enjoy this wonderful experience.